Okay, to add the V-Ray light mix, which is, again, my favorite new feature of V-Ray over the last couple years, you just go into your render settings and you go to your render elements again and you add the V-Ray light mixer, V-Ray light mix channel it's called. Then when you render, it gives you the capability to have the light mix built in. So once that's added, you can just hit render again. And in the new frame buffer, which may be new to you, probably not, it's been around a couple versions again. Although before when I was working in this scene, it was a different frame buffer. So now a lot of the things are just built in here as layers. It's quite nice because you can kind of do a lot of your post work right here. You just add new layers by saying, I want to let, add in a, a lookup table. I want to add a curves. I want to add exposure, filmic tone map. Okay, so you can do a lot of kind of light balance, color balance, color grading. You can do all that stuff in here. But the most powerful thing has got to be the light mix. Okay, so when I click on light mix, you have the you have the opportunity to go to just just make the RGB the base here, but we want to make the light mix the base for our color channel. And that that now lists every single light in our scene. And we have the ability to turn it up or down and change the color. So what I like to do is turn them all off and then one at a time adjust them to be the level that I think is right. So you can see that's isolating that light and I want these lamps to be like bright right like this and look at look at how the fog is showing up with these and making these lamps into volumetric i think that's a super cool effect okay and this is all happening while i'm rendering it's not costing me any render time or anything like that i can render i can change all these lights after the fact huge huge advantage to the newer versions of e-ray so the lamp shade has its own light so that was just the bulbs the shade I want to be bright too, not that bright. It's kind of made up of two different lights. I think one is probably fine there. Love the volumetric effect going on here. So the sunset light source, that's our HDRI. It's not even showing through the fog at all, but we could probably make it. No, it's, the fog is too heavy. It's like pitch black up there. Okay, now it's shining through. Now I will warn you, you don't want to push these lights too far in the light mix. So what I would maybe do here is go back into my scene and turn up the multiplier on that light so I don't have to multiply it so much here. But that's actually kind of cool, right? See the blue coming through? I don't know if it'll stay like that, but we can we can try it. Okay, now these lights I really want to glow. We'll turn those up to 10. Look at how cool that is, see? So this gives you so much power to, again, to be an artist and not have to worry about the technical aspects of your lighting and everything so much and not have to go back and do render previews of every single little thing you do, right? So this is cool. This is really cool. Okay, let's go on to the next light. Yeah, those ones definitely, let's put those higher. Not so high. I don't want those to be the focus of our scene. Yeah, these ones, yes. Up, up, up. So you can see with all this fog, it's kind of... The lights are all kind of too dim, but look at that. You can see the volume, the volume light just show up as I turn on these lights. I think it's cool. Maybe no, everyone else isn't as excited as I am. Okay, three, two. I don't like the color of those lights. They're too cool, right? So maybe, maybe we can adjust them. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so that makes them warmer. That light, uh, that would be cool if it was really bright. Maybe. This one, definitely. Definitely brighter, like that. Now, now that one's really cool too. Maybe we need to adjust that, I don't know. What is that light? This is just kind of a background light that's putting kind of this haze. It's lighting up the fog in the front, in the foreground, like that. Kind of cool. Okay, nice, more, more lights. I'm just turning up every light here. Huh. That's pretty cool though, look at that. Okay, maybe I just want to turn up overall exposure. I think that blue sky in the background is too distracting. It doesn't go with the rest of the color. So maybe it needs to be more like that. Getting a very colorful scene going on here. Okay, let's go at some more of the lights. Yes. That's cool too. 
you can I, I love how you can see how each light is adding some to the volume the volumetric fog that's really cool these lights let's turn them up so you can see how much fun you can have with this right those lights there yes I mean I think it's fun self illumination is the last thing oh now self illumination is going to include the emissiveness on our fog okay so that's kind of cool I want this to be bright for that red light but not too bright for the rest of the fog there's no way to isolate those two things from each other but we'll just find the right balance maybe right about there and we can turn off our sunset all together yeah it's it's nice it's adding a little something now interestingly you could change the color of this self illumination right it's getting a little crazy though if you push if you try to push it too far it will start to get messed up you saw when I go to red I mean that doesn't look right at all but this is kind of interesting kind of an interesting looking scene right I think we should turn down this light in the foreground where was that one this is a good a good example of why you should name your lights properly especially if you're using light mix so I apologize for that where was that one light that one if I turn that one off altogether, it looks better because now this dark stuff is framing my scene in here, right? Okay, so this is kind of interesting and it's it's fun to experiment. Maybe my windows, my first couple windows that I did are too bright and they're for some reason they're really green. Okay, so we could toy with all that stuff. I guess it's, no, it's not there. Not there, those ones look great. So cool. It's those windows in front. That one needs to be turned down some. Yeah. Okay, here's the windows that I'm looking for. Let's just turn those down to four and make them more warm. So anyway, there's our really foggy scene with the lighting all dialed in how we want it. Okay, now let's just explore a more traditional kind of sunset scene without all the fog. Okay, but I thought this was fun to do. It's a great example of how the light mix can really come in handy. Imagine trying to adjust each one of those lights and render with the fog. Oh, one thing to keep in mind, if you turn on this rest light, this one will include your ambient occlusion typically. And when you have, I was finding that when I was rendering this scene, I was getting some artifacting around the opacity maps of these trees and things like that as the fog went further and further back and if i turned off the rest light which includes ambient occlusion then it was getting rid of that so you can see there's a really nice soft transition with the fog and it's working great so everything is working good in this current scene but if you have that problem you can turn off the ambient occlusion and it should help okay so that's the v-ray light mixer and the new v-ray frame frame buffer in the next scene Let's look at the lens effects real quick and also let's and then we'll move on to do a little bit different looking scene with the same model and everything the same setup exactly except that we'll change the light mixer and we'll turn down the atmospherics.